Let's work on the concept of consumer surplus in this video. And in the next video, we're going to work on producer surplus and see what is the similarity between them. So what is consumer surplus? Let's put it in simple words. That is the benefit to consumers for buying products at a price less than their willingness to pay. So it's benefit to consumer to consumers uh, by buying let's say goods at a price lower than their willingness to pay now what is willingness to pay willingness to pay is the maximum price that a customer would be paying for a certain good so let's understand this willingness to pay concept and we'll understand this consumer surplus willingness to pay and all of that on our uh, graph so I plotted here a demand a demand curve for apples so let's say that would be the apples demanded now the willingness to pay is actually the demand curve this is the willingness to pay the demand curve shows us the price that we're willing to pay for different quantities for instance to buy let me change colors to buy one kilo of apples so over here let's say this would be one kilo of apples let me zoom out to have a better a better view and more space yes to buy one kilos of apples we would be willing to pay this price so for example that would correspond to a price of nine so nine euros per kilo we're willing to pay uh, for one kilo of apples now if you want to buy two kilos of apples we would pay for that for instance seven and a half euros per kilo that would be the most that we would pay because if we go above that so if we would like to, to, to charge the consumers eight euros for two kilos of apples there's going to be no demand literally the line is just not there now what is the consumer surplus is a benefit by buying at the price lower than the willingness to pay so let's stick to our example if uh, the market price for apples is three euros per kilo so this is this is the market price consumers buy five kilos of apples while they would be willing to pay much more than that so for the first kilo of apples they would be willing to pay nine euros for the second kilo of apples they would be willing to pay seven and a half euros for the third kilo of apple they would be willing to pay um, let's say six euros and so on so for different quantities they would actually pay more than what we charge so the fact that they're not paying is a savings for them. They keep this money in their pocket. So that's literally the benefit that we're talking about. Meaning that all these differences between the price and the willingness to pay, between the price and the demand, are the benefits to consumers. And if we aggregate it, if we take all this benefit, that's gonna be this, sh this area over here, which is our consumer surplus. I hope this makes sense. So once again, the consumer surplus is the difference between the willingness to pay and the price that we are charging until the quantity that we actually sell. Um, and the way we calculate it is basically by calculating an area of a triangle. This is a right triangle, so a 90 degree triangle, meaning that the area is one over two times the width. So in our case, the width is just this part, five, and the height. And the height would be the difference between 3 and 10, which is 7. And if we do the math, that's 35 divided by 2. So that's uh, 4, uh, 17, yeah, 17.5. So that would be the consumer surplus. 17.5 euros worth of value that the customers are saving. Hope this makes sense. In the next video, we're going to see what producer surplus means.